Hi, I'm Shellas on the Roof from Canada's Drag Race, and you're watching Extra Magazine's After the Sachet. Shayla's on the roof. It's so nice to meet you and to talk to you. Hello, how are you doing today? Uh, wonderful, stunning, alive. Uh, we're here, we're queer. It's, it's a good time. It's a very great time. And you had a very great showing on Canada's Drag Race. I've got to tell you, my indigenous friends are obsessed with you. They really relate to your humor and to your drag persona. They see things in your art that maybe I don't see and it is delighted them and they just feel so seen by it. How, tell me, do indigenous cultures inform your drag sensibility? You know, this question comes up in a couple different forms. Like people say, how has it affected your experience or what does it represent? It's like any other culture or person's experience is that you grew up in it. This is your lived experience. You're going to reflect that. And it's just a part of who you are to say that it, it's only representing one part of myself as inaccurate. It, it informs everything. It informs my humor. It informs my, my storytelling. It informs the way I approach life. So... Um, it's it's not just one aspect, it's it's everything in my life. And I find it interesting when people, you know, I've seen a couple times being like, well, why are you relying on that indigeneity? I'm like, well, why are you relying on your upbringing? I don't know, because it's our experience, you know? Yeah, and creative people funnel their experiences into their art. And I think that every contestant has some element of that. And mm -hmm. it, it's definitely not just you. Um, right. Tell me, on social media, you are known as Auntie. Yes. Who is Auntie? What is Auntie? Explain it to me. Hi everyone, it's Auntie or Shell is on the Rube. Hey, hi, hello, it's me, Auntie. Hello, it's me, Auntie. Auntie, Auntie, or any of the other pronunciations you may find, because a lot of people, <laughs> uh, you know, say things in different ways, and that's fine too, um, is, is the, you know, my love letter to Indigenous women. Uh, Auntie is that you know, women or women, multiple, plural, sorry, that represent uh, the ones who raised me, the ones who um, showed me that it was okay to be who I am, that, that gave me that unconditional love and um, uh, humor and, and, and sense of creativity. They, they gave me the permission to be who I am. So Auntie is just a reflection of that. And um, it's, it's wild that so many people get it and relate to it in a way. Um, it, it's been a beautiful thing. And um, I'm so grateful to have that um, character persona represented. On the show this week, you had this really powerful moment with chaos where you two related to each other. How did it feel in that moment to to share that together? I am Métis, yeah. but I just don't know a lot about my Indigenous side. You know, I think it's interesting that we're having this discussion on Canada's Drag Race because it's such a impactful TV show that represents our culture as a country. and. There are so many stories that are being reflected on this season and so many different ways uh, to relate to these artists. So Chaos is Métis and um, was not very comfortable discussing that from what I knew, from what I knew. Um, they, they're going to tell their own story. I'm not going to tell them for uh, tell that for them. But when they opened up to me about their indigeneity, it, it gave me you know, I, I just wanted to let them know that it's okay. That, you know, you don't have to filter your indigeneity for anyone. Your experience is your own and no one's gonna be able to define that yes. except for you. Because we live in this country for so long that shamed indigenous people um, to uh, not represent themselves, to literally outlawing practices, to um, putting us through very traumatic experiences and still expecting us to filter our experiences or, or tell them in a way that is digestible. And I don't agree with that because we have so many things that, you know, happen in, in today's times that we have to represent ourselves unapologetically because no one's going to do it for us, you know? And, and if I could just pass that message on to anyone, because I know there's so many Indigenous people that feel the way that chaos does. And I just wanted that message to be out there that like, it's okay, you know? It's our time. You don't have to change who you are 
you have to love who you are. You know, I found that. And it's actually funny because I got that same type of permission to be unapologetic through TikTok and my community. It was great. Speaking of TikTok, congratulations on hitting half a million followers. Thank you so much. You know what? I'm grateful that people relate to me um, and, and love the humor. So I, that type of humor, that type of love and content creation is, is universal, I think. So got me here. Look at me. I'm on extra. Stunning. <laughs> I saw that you had tweeted out a message after Fierce had received some hate following some of the conflict that had been seen on the show between the two of you. What's your message to fans who are responding when they see drama or conflict on Canada's Drag Race? Let me tell you, there's two, two ways I want to approach this. First being, um, I'm not responsible for anyone else besides me. I take accountability from all my own actions. I feel like there is this perspective that because I am very well known within the Indigenous community, I'm responsible for every single person who is Indigenous. That is not the truth. I will say that. And I think it was made to felt that way and that perspective I don't agree with. Because while I am a representation of this community that is Indigenous, doesn't mean I reflect every single person or every single person's actions. That's number one. Number two, you're not going to like everyone in this world. Yes. You're going to disagree with people. You're not going to like them. I, f I don't like certain people. <laughs> like Everyone does it. That's just life. But the way you decide to treat that is a, a reflection on you as a person. If you choose to send death threats and hate to someone you don't like, that's disgusting to me. I will never not stand by that because that's the truth. I, I don't care how much I dislike a person. I would never wish that on another person. And, you know, keep it to yourself. You don't like someone talk, you know, smack about them with your friends, not to their face. Don't DM us or tag us. That's another thing that's really annoying and disgusting. It's like, do you think we want to see that? We're still people at the end of this day. We have mental health too. You know, us as the queer community like to talk about how much we all go through these issues and yet it's our own community that are the biggest perpetrators of this hatred. Start a group chat. <laughs> <laughs> you recently performed at the very first Pride Festival in your hometown of Dillon, Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. That seems like a very full circle moment. Uh, what was it like? It was a moment of healing for me to go back and to be unapologetically myself. As, as a queer two-spirit person and to show the next generation that it's okay. That it's, it's again, it's possible for you to be yourself. And there's gonna be a community there that loves you. Maybe not everyone, but to just say that like, it's fine now, it's good. It was very conflicting for me, but um, it healed a part of myself. And I was so grateful for that. I think that you have made just a massive impact on social media, on the show. I can't wait to see what's next for you. And so I've got to ask, what are we getting for in the future from Shayla Zahn? I'm quitting drag right after this interview. <laughs> I mean, I'm exhausted. I, I could just nap, you know, sell the wigs. Um, no, there's shows. There's, there's content, it's not gonna be an album. You know, <laughs> hopefully a comedy tour. Hey, I'd love to do that. Uh, I love I love telling jokes and, 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 you know, living my best life. I also really love to act, which I would have loved to have done more of. And I think you get to see some of the skills there. But um, my, like, my goal in life is to get on Res Dogs, Reservation Dogs. I'm obsessed with that TV show. What about you? No boyfriend? No. Girlfriend? Can't be tamed. Anytime there's native media, I'm just like, get me on there right now. I'll send a smoke signal. I will. <laughs> Thank you for watching Extras After the Sashay. Make sure to follow me on all social media platforms, keep up with me, and um, see all the cool things we're working on. Stay deadly. <laughs>